If you want to get maximum cinematic quality from your AI videos, you need to use Minimax. Minimax creates the best physics and videos from any publicly available AI video tool. And in this video, I'm going to show you step by step what you can do to get maximum cinematic quality from the tool. Let's hop in. Before we get going, be sure to like and subscribe if you want more AI tutorials and news directly here on YouTube. For our example, we're going to be using images. Using images to drive your video is better than just typing in text alone because you have way more control over the color grading, the output, and the consistency. So I have this image here of this man kind of like holding this mysterious stone. We don't know what's going on. The shot here of him kind of looking up like he's worried about something. We have this guard dog that maybe it's tracking him in the woods. And then we have this shot of him hiding behind a tree. So kind of developing a light story here. Now using Minimax is a little confusing because the actual website is called Hilu. That's like the parent company of the tool is called Minimax. It's really confusing. You'll find a link below this video to follow along. Now I should note that all of the images, videos, and examples that I'll use inside of this tutorial, you can download for yourself to follow along and examine for yourself. There's a link below this video to check that out. So I'm on the Hilu website here and you can poke around and just check out some of the explore videos for yourself. And right at the top here, you'll see we have this prompt box. So what you're going to do is click on the image icon here and you can upload your image right here, it's super easy. I'm going to select the image of the guy that's kind of looking off into the distance. So prompting inside of Minimax is distinctly different than if you're prompting in other tools like Luma or Kling. Essentially, you need to describe your scene as if a kindergartner is describing what they're looking at. So in our example here, we have the man looks around with a worried face, then he walks forward out of frame, the camera is stationary. So we're describing what the camera is doing, we're describing what the subject is doing, and we're kind of using this kind of third person objective text to describe what is happening. And I should note that there is this button here to do basically auto prompt enhancement. I recommend turning that off because you want to have maximum control over your scene. Whenever you turn on automatic prompting, it can kind of go crazy with it and it's not ideal. So when you're ready to generate your clip, go ahead and click the generate button. So I'm not gonna lie to you, Minimax can take a while to generate the videos. For this example, it took half an hour to generate the videos, but here is our result. So we have the shot here of this man and he's looking kind of worried and he walks out of frame. So that is what we prompted. I think I kind of envisioned him walking forward, but it still did follow the prompt. We probably just need to be a little more descriptive for our next scene. We also have this shot here of him holding the stone and there's some pretty good physics there. I think the stone, it kind of turns in a bit of a weird way there, but it did a really good job. He has five total fingers and uh, the physics look really good. The parallaxing in the background is pretty awesome too. We have this shot here of this dog and you know, just kind of building the suspense in the scene. It kind of looks like he found him and he's going to check him out. And then we have this shot here of this man. He's kind of hiding behind the tree. Kind of a weird face there, but then he walks away. So you can see how all of these videos together could be combined to begin to tell a narrative story. But you may be wondering, how does this compare to some of the other AI video generators that are out there? Well, I got you. So we did the same generation inside of Luma and it created this result here. You can see his face gets a little strange. It kind of breaks down towards the end and it didn't really follow the prompt. We wanted him to walk forward and that never really happens. And we have this generation from Runway here and you can see that his face gets a kind of weird there. Uh, it really changes by the end of that video and ultimately it didn't really follow the prompt because we wanted him to walk out of frame. Now I really wanted to push this comparison to the next level. So let's take a look at a different scene using the other AI video generators. So I wanna start with Kling here. So here are some clips that were generated in Kling. And you can see that they look okay. There's definitely some strange distortion that is happening in them. Like this one, for example, just cut to this random field for no apparent reason. And a lot of the shots kind of seem like they're somewhat in slow motion. This one's not bad. This one of this like elf character, 
her eyes really begin to break down so that probably wouldn't be usable in a professional context. And we have this shot here of this woman and her face really is getting distorted. And again, it's in slow motion, which is not great if you're trying to tell a live action story. We have the same generations from Luma. I actually do like this scene here, but the birds seem like they're just appearing out of nowhere there. We have this shot of this guy kind of looking off in the distance and you know, it is kind of slow motion. I don't know what's happening to the horse's hair there. I think it might be just like turning into particles. The shot does look good, but again, it's in slow motion. This shot here, again, kind of slow motion, but you know, the parallaxing does look pretty good. Uh, again, a different shot of the guy with the horse, and I just don't know what's happening to the horse there. <laughs> uh, his face is getting distorted. This shot looks really good. It does look like the, the bad guy here is being contemplative. It does go out of focus at the end, but, you know, hypothetically, that could be what we're looking for. And finally, we have this shot of this woman here. Again, completely in slow motion. There's some weird distortion behind her head. Not the best result from Luma. And inside of Runway, we have this generation... Her hands get really strange, so not sure what's happening there. Uh, we have this shot here. I actually do like the physics here. I think it did a good job. Obviously, uh, you know, it seems like the frame rate is slowed down a little bit, but not not too bad. Uh, one of the better generations that I've seen from Runway in a while. And is the background turning into a face? Like, are those lips? <laughs> is that a nose? <laughs> what's happening there? Uh, we also have this shot here. Again, it's in slow-mo, but it does look pretty good. It, does look like this bad guy is kind of being contemplative here. And we have this shot here, which is funny because you have like a super fast live action smoke hit. And then you also have just like a slow-mo, just like getting closer to his face, which there's a lot of stability in the face. So not too bad, but again, it's in slow motion, which isn't great for telling both stories. We have this shot here establishing the clouds. They're moving way too fast. The water doesn't look super realistic and the overall color <laughs> changes and i think those mountains in the background they're just like moving so uh not a great generation there for runway and then finally in runway we have this shot of this elf person and you know she's looking at the camera i think it comes across more as like a beauty commercial as opposed to you know a narrative film but it actually did a pretty good job i like the the parallaxing and there's a lot of consistency with the uh, face of the character now let's compare that to the same generations inside of Minimax. So we have this shot here of this person and there is some weirdness happening with their fingers just a little bit. You could probably cut around it, but honestly it did a pretty good job. I like the flicker in the background with the candles that really adds to the realism of the scene. We have this shot here of this elf character. You can see her eyes are connected. Like it looks like she's looking around and then she just walks out of scene. But the cool thing is there's the continuity of the character to walk around that tree. Like that's some really advanced physics that uh, are really incredible. We have this establishing shot here and I think it did a great job. I love the parallaxing with the trees on the right side. The clouds look good. The water looks pretty good. Obviously there's some room to improve. It seems like it's flickering a little too fast, but honestly did a pretty darn good job. We have the shot here of the guy looking around and Obviously with the horse, there's some weirdness going on here, but it does look live action. I think generally speaking, it did a pretty good job. And then our final shot here of the bad guy character, you can see he's just contemplating, looking around, you know, thinking about his master plan. I think it did a pretty good job. So if you end the tutorial now, you are not going to get maximum cinematic quality. Next step, we need to up res our video footage. So the video clips that you get from Minimax alone are going to be in 720p in 25 frames per second. And most film projects require you to have the film in 24 frames per second. So you need to change the frame rate and you need to expand the overall resolution just to get maximum quality. So in order to do that, we are going to use a tool called Topaz Video AI. It's my favorite AI video upreser. It doesn't use credits. You purchase it, you own it, you get to use uh, Topaz as much as you want on your machine. So I'm going to take our video clips that we generated and drag and drop them into Topaz video. And you'll see they all pop up here. I'm gonna hold down shift and select all of them so that we can basically edit them in batch and we don't have to do it one at a time, which is really nice. So under output, we are going to select a resolution that is one step beyond the output resolution that we're looking for. So if you're working on an HD project, 
export in 4K. If you're working on a 4K project, try to export in at least 5K, hopefully 6K. They even have an 8K option, which is super intense on your computer, but it could give you a really good result. So I'll go ahead and select 4K. And for frame rate, you can change that to 24 if you want to have that exact 24 frames per second frame rate. I'm gonna keep ours at 25 for now, just for this example. And under the AI model for enhancement here, we are going to click the drop down and select Thea. So Thea is the best AI upresing model that's available inside of Topaz video at time of recording. The other models are really good, but Thea is the best. It also is the most intense on your computer. So just keep that in mind whenever you are working on your project. Now we need to select our export format. So just go to the menu at the bottom corner and there are different codecs that you can use. If you're working on a professional project, I recommend selecting ProRes. If you're working on a project that's just going on social media, you can select H.264 just to you know lower the file size. It's completely up to you. So I'll select H.264 just for some quick examples and then go ahead and click export. So let's take a look at our results here. So we have this first shot here and honestly, the fidelity is incredible. You can see the wrinkles in his hand, the pores, on the skin, there's fibers in the actual clothing and that information was not present in the 720p video. So it really did an amazing job. It looks like it was captured on a professional camera. We have this shot here of the man and he walks away. You can see the pores on his neck, like the actual, uh, the skin wrinkles. It looks amazing. We have this shot here with the dog. Again, you can see the individual hair fibers in the dog. This is amazing. Like this is incredible cinematic footage uh, from Minimax. And then finally we have the shot here. Again, you can see the individual hairs. You can see the hairs on his beard. The tree has fidelity inside of the bark. So it really is a really nice professional video quality that you could use on a large scale project. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to get maximum cinematic quality from Minimax. Now, I should note that if you want to learn how to create AI films for yourself, be sure to check out our AI filmmaking course at Curious Refuge. Curious Refuge is the most popular home for AI filmmaking in the world. We train artists in over 149 countries on the latest AI filmmaking techniques, and we would love to have you inside of the program. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to like and subscribe if you want more tutorials and AI news directly here on the platform. Be sure to let us know in the comments if you have any requests for future tutorials. We will see you next time.